five minutes to three o'clock here on BBC Radio Foil. And this is, of course, the Mark Patterson Show. It is Tuesday, which means technology on this programme. Emma Robertson can't be with us this week, so I am delighted to be joined by Professor Kevin Curran from the Computer Science Research Institute at Ulster University. Lots to talk about because the world of technology never seems to stay still at all, Kevin. Um, in terms of the, the suggestions, I, I love, although I'm worried about this, the new look camera that will judge your outfits, that, that terrifies me. Maybe yeah. not so much you because you're in your very slick grey suit and your white shirt, so you're looking pretty sharp. But how does this piece of kit work? Well, Amazon Echo Look Style Assistant Camera. So you use it to review your outfits. So you would stand in front of it, twirl around, <laughs> And the software inside would make a judgmental decision on whether you should wear that outfit or not. It would review it for you. And you can also compare two outfits. You can walk down, stand in front of the camera, do a twirl, put on your second outfit, and then the companion app will give you um, a decision as to which outfit hmm. you should wear. But you must have to put in some preferences, do you, summer well, or night? Because if I'm going off surfing, not that yeah. I often go off surfing, but my outfit is going to be totally different if I'm going for a meeting or if I'm going to sit in the sun in the park. Of course. I mean, it, it, you know, the stylists have worked on this and obviously programmers have put in the decisions into what should be. And of course, it was would be subjective to someone who developed the system. Yeah. Um, but it, it is there and again, it will store all the looks that you had. And again, I guess Amazon, of course, are becoming the de facto place to shop, the shop of the internet, well, really. And the I, second richest person in the world is the owner, is oh, the founder, yeah. Jeff Bezos, 75 billion. Is that all? He is worth, 75. so. Who's the first? Oh, um, yeah. Still Bill Gates. Well, probably, um, yeah, and I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. and There's then the Mexican, um, Carlos. Jackie. And um, you're number three. Oh, no, sorry, <laughs> yeah. number four you are now then, Kevin. That's fair enough. Does it work on voice recognition? Um, it, it doesn't well, and it also because people might not be aware that the uh, there's this Amazon um, Alexa, um, which is like a speaker yes. in your house. You're connected to the internet, and you can speak to it and ask it about what the weather will be like, um, you know, what is the capital of, you know, United States. You're interacting with it, the internet through the voice. So this also has Amazon Alexa um, skills and builds. So you can communicate with this camera as well because it's from Amazon as well. So it's twofold. It's it's an assistant in your house and it's also got a camera. Well, in fairness, I was thinking seriously about Alexa because I, was, I happened to be at a, at a house um, a couple of weeks ago and that, that they, the guy who was hosting the, the evening started to speak to Alexa. Alexa, play. Actually, I think it was play Gentle Mother. And I was incredibly impressed mm -hmm. that Alexa immediately got Gentle Mother. I think it may have even been a Daniel O'Donnell version of Gentle Mother. And there she and she was very obedient and very well behaved and I thought, yes, I could do with her in the house. But I, I wish she could do the ironing. No, <laughs> she can't. <laughs> so I was thinking of, of, of investing in an Alexa, but I said, what about the cost of this? Because Alexa is quite low yeah, this cost. This is about 150 UK. 150 quid. At the moment, it's by invitation only, but it's about 150 pounds. Excuse me? I buy, I buy, who has to invite you? Oh, uh, you, you, you apply for, you, you go to the website and you ask, can I be a beta tester? You know. I thought you were going to say you apply for EU status, and I was going to say, well, that's going to open another whole <laughs> can of worms there. I see. So you have to be invited. Well, there yeah. you go. Uh, all right. Well, we'll set her aside in the meantime. Um, the other one that I like the sound of that you were talking about today is you can now talk to your fridge, well, certain fridges. Yeah, yeah. There's a Samsung have a well, they have, they have a family hub fridge, which I particularly like because they have a range of fridges, as you know, with a lot of technology. But this one is a 550 liter um, fridge, but it's also got um, a 21 inch tablet on the outside, so you can look at your calendar, you can surf the web, you can listen to music, you can play videos, you know, but that's not that unique. There is other fridges which have tablets and displays on the outside, which is like a TV built into your fridge. Right. But what I like about this is got three Wi-Fi connected cameras, which take a snapshot of your fridge every time you shut the door. So if you're in the supermarket, you bring up your companion app and you can check to see, oh, do I have eggs? Do I need butter? Do I need milk? Um, and it also you can scan items as you put them into it, like your yogurt and it will warn you when they're about to expire. Mm. So therefore, hopefully, this would lead to less waste. <laughs> well, and funny, we were talking about waste and people asking for doggy bags or not asking for doggy bags in Northern Ireland and the success that Scotland has had with the campaign. Now, would that confuse those three cameras if I go to a restaurant tonight, get a doggy bag, put it in, 
to the fridge, activate the system, and there are no sell-by dates or no anything. It's just a, yeah. a, a foiled, wrapped piece of food. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, yeah, it has to work. It, it would be confused. It wouldn't know this. <laughs> Unless it has the option for you to type in what the expiry date and who has the time for that. <laughs> well, the, the price tag is going to put a few people off this because this is not £150 or anywhere near no, it. No, it's £4,500. Oh, who buys those things? Do people do that? Uh, well, they do. I mean, you know, these guys, Samson, don't make these fridges for no, you know, for, for a market of two well, or three. I mean, there are gadgets. Are you a gadget freak? Because there I, are people who are gadget yeah. freaks who just have to have the latest iPhone, the latest iWatch, the latest this, the latest that. Obviously, yeah. they've got deep pockets. Yeah, I, I, I consider myself uh, to a degree, but only if it makes me more productive. I don't buy gadgets for the sake of it. And I would never buy a fridge like this because I've seen one last year, not by Samson, but they didn't update the display. So the people who bought this fridge are left with a dead display on the front of the fridge because, they, because of course, these run Android, they run iOS, you know, they generally run an Android version, which is a competitor to Apple. Um, and unless the manufacturers update these devices, then you are left with a brick device. And what you have is an ugly display, which doesn't work anymore. So I'd be very hesitant for people to buy a fridge just because it has an inbuilt display because these tablets, they date very quickly and you've no control mm. over it. Um, so, you know, it's just, I would say if you're buying a fridge and it has the option of the inbuilt cameras, um, ugh, maybe. But and to me, it's another device Think taking twice, up room yeah. on my home network, using my bandwidth. Uh, so, I, again, I, I just make a judgment on things I buy. If they make me more productive, okay. then, yes, I'll go for them. So yes to judging your outfits, which you need no help with at all, and no to that fridge that, that keeps things right in the meantime anyway. But I know you are a fan, I think you are, Kevin, anyway, of the ultra-high definition TVs. Is, isn't that right? Now, what, what's the difference between an ultra-high definition? I can never tell. I go into yeah. these shops and I think, gosh... <laughs> What, what, what are oh, we missing is, here? It is, it is hard unless you're side by side. Just that the blacks are blacker and the whites are whiter. Okay. You have, you know, you have greater definition really in the, in the yeah. you know, more pixels. But when it comes down to it there that you can see things in a darker, in a darker scene, which, you know, quite a lot of series as I've noticed lately on Netflix or Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they filmed them at nighttime and there's very little contrast where an ultra HD tablet will make a big difference or a display. Now, some people consider this a very personal question, and you can refuse to answer it if you That's wish fine. to. What size is your ultra-high definition television? Uh, it's 50 inch. 50 inch? Yeah. That seems very big to me. I think mine is 32. Yeah. But that probably puts me back in the, the 80s oh, category, no, no. does it? Yeah, yeah. But I remember getting an invitation to a man to come and look at a 60 inch -er TV, you know, because he was showing The Quiet Man or something on this, and I was thinking, 60 inch? That's a cinema. You know, but I mean, how big it is, <laughs> are they going to get? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on how far away you are. But I mean, but for many years, up until I got that display, I then, I generally projected everything onto a hundred inch. So yeah, even my TV, I would watch most of my. Yeah, I only watch it certain times okay. of the week. But everything I watch would have been on a hundred inch projector. Look, you know what? If it's your thing, you do it. And I would say the same to everyone. If you enjoy yeah. one particular thing, then then knock yourself out. Go for it. But the other news as well that um, you were reporting on this week, Kevin, in terms of cafes and uh, this Wi-Fi culture that some cafe owners are are getting a bit fed up with. Because the first question, and I've seen it, and I've done it myself. Yeah. What's your Wi-Fi code? when you go in to have a cup of coffee or you go in to have your lunch and it kind of takes away from that social aspect uh, doesn't it? it it does yeah there's a guy tim horton who owns a, um, a, a cafe hot black in vancouver and he's took away the wi-fi because he found people were coming in with their laptops and sitting there and then people didn't want to come in they would walk other customers would walk in and see all these people kind of space out with laptops in front of them mm -hmm. and no talk and no chatter and they would walk out again and he said even the, the staff had to turn up turn on the music loud because they were being overheard by all these silent workers in the cafe. And again, and he, he, people were saying, well, maybe you do that for churn. You want to get more people in and out. For, but he said, no, yeah. I want I want my cafe to have an ambience, you know. So mm. I understand his dilemma, you know. But again, how how can he keep this up? Because people do demand and expect Wi-Fi. And you know, it's kind of the modern equivalent of the smoking ban, which again, yeah. we were talking about yesterday. People said, oh, yeah, that'll never, people will never go to pubs. They'll never do this. Yeah. They'll never go that. And we got over that. Yeah. So we'll get over this, I'm sure, will yeah. we? Uh, possibly. But I think people would just take up the phone and use their phone as a connection <laughs> and still sit there with their laptops. You know, it's anyway. just as simple. But they, they'll look for the nearest cafe, I'm sure, that has Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, it's very hard for him to keep 
to this dance. It must be part of your uh, and parcel of your job, Kevin, as well, to try to predict some future trends. I mean, the technology just, I can remember being a massive fan of Tomorrow's World years and years yeah. and years ago. And in those days, back in the 70s, as youngsters, we were like, oh, no, they'll never do that, they'll never do that. And all of those things. I've come to pass, and and the same applies these days. Do you wander off in your mind sometimes and think, where is it all going to end? As we hear sometimes the older generation maybe despairing slightly and wondering where it will all end. And that's not to put it word, but there is no end, really, is no, there? No, there is no end. But it's also very, only a fool would try to predict, because YouTube's only 10 years old as a household name. You know, the, iP the iPad, iPhone, only about 10 years. You know, and we've seen where we've come. So it's very hard to... to to predict down the line um you just know that technology never gets worse it mm -hmm. only gets better you know it's become a pervasive everything is moving towards it um like i've seen later we've seen unfortunately the shops the high streets of the world will never be as full as they are now that um it's increasing year on year the, the amount mm -hmm. of shopping that we do on our phones and what we use it for it's become the hub of our, of our life really you know no one remembers a phone number anymore and no one knows how to get from a to b without their phone without navigation you know and we've lost all these devices that would have been things like radios now are on the phone torches are on the phone we have all these multi you know all these particular functional devices we had previously all being taken over by a phone yeah. phones are getting larger getting more powerful again now you can plug them into your screens and use them as your computer and take them on the movie and just um just technology, everything seems to be moving towards that. And I would hate to be someone who is not our favorite with technology now. And mm -hmm. I've always said, send your kids to computer classes, to technology classes, Precisely. because you want to be Well, I prepared. guess your, your youngster, your students then, they're young adults. They they would help to keep you up to date as much as anything else. Because, I mean, yeah. that's what people always say. If you need something done technically in the house, get a six-year-old, get a 10-year-old, certainly get an 18-year-old, because they're all very hands-on and yeah, au fait, aren't they? I, to I totally agree. I, I've been fortunate for the last number of years that my kids being in my 13 and 16 and they're totally into technology and they do teach me a lot and I see things that they do which surprise me and I see I can see where it's going and to mm -hmm. some degree which always was surprised whereas if I want to know something I would immediately go to Google you know like a search engine always was surprised my kids would go straight to YouTube um, I always find that surprising you know young people kind of live on YouTube and yeah. will take the time whereas I always look for a, a written piece of material to come back and give me the answer they're happy enough to sit there through an ad and wait for someone to tell them I know, funny I, a 16 year old sympathized with me not so long ago whenever I inadvertently happened to mention that there were no computers at the school that I went to you know the big school and I went there to have like, what <laughs> I, it was as if I should be reporting to some kind of child cruelty somewhere along the line. No computers. And then I told them there were no mobile phones, you know, whenever I was a kid. So it is day and night, really, isn't it? To, to maybe even to an extent, you're a young man, but even to whenever you were growing up when you were at university. Yeah, I, absolutely. But I, I know where I was when I first seen a computer and knew what I wanted to do and back in yeah, 1984. 1984. Yeah, which now, you know, the memory of that wouldn't even store... The memory in that computer would only store about two seconds of a song, you know, which is incredible to think. Outrageous. There has to be somebody we can send an email to to complain <laughs> about that. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin, listen, it's been lovely to meet you and to yeah. chat to you and to, for you to give us a, a window on a, on a, well, not even futuristic world. It's here yeah. and it's now. So I look forward to, to more technological advice uh, over the coming weeks. So thank you very much, Kevin. And I hope you get to enjoy some of that good weather. Are you enjoying it? Is it winding down a wee bit at university? No? I am, yeah. I walk a dog every day, so it's great to have... Good for you, you know, to have a sun right. shine in uh -huh. my face. Yeah. Good enough. All right. Well, happy yeah. walking to you and the dog. Thanks a million, Kevin Curran, um, with the latest on, on a very, very increasingly high-tech world. And we were, of course, talking about the fabulous weather. I know I'm asking everybody about it, but it's just been incredible. And I think we should uh, hear now from our very own meteorologist and BBC mm -hmm. weather forecaster, Cecilia Daly. Have you had a chance, Cecilia, to 